Hey guys, Adrian here from the Digital Dojos, and today we have part three of the ScreenFlow tutorials. We're going to be continuing you, showing you guys how to use ScreenFlow, a little bit of tips and tricks into the ScreenFlow interface. Today I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about audio, and I want to talk about text. Now, uh, two simple things that you can, uh, you know, you may overlook in videos. Obviously, see the other half of a video, other than the video, is audio. Audio makes up about 50% of the video. Um, because you can, oh, not 50%, it should make up the full 100%, hopefully. But uh, what I mean by that is you should have a balance of obviously good video and good audio because you can have a really, really good tutorial, but if you have crappy audio, uh, it's not really going to matter. You know, if you have really low audio, they can't hear you, but you might have HD quality video. Same thing goes for if you have really good video and you have a really uh, crappy video and really good audio, you know, vice versa. So uh, today I want to talk a little bit about audio. So let's say you drag a clip of audio or you know a video with audio attached to it in the timeline here. Now you're going to get a couple things. You can show the clip in the inspector, uh, and you can do a couple things. When you show the clip inspector, it's going to do one thing uh, that's really uh, interesting. It's going to show you here the duration of the clip. So you don't have to zoom out and look at the whole timeline. You're going to see how long your audio is in general. For this example, I have an MP3 of my podcast that I recorded. Now at default, it, the speed is going to be at 100%. Now that's going to be obviously the uh, normal rate uh, you would hear audio. Now you can obviously increase that to get a little bit more of a speedier effect. You can slow it down. Um, again, it's going to adjust the duration as you do that because obviously if you slow down audio, the duration is going to get longer because it takes longer to play it. Now in the case that you speed up audio, it's going to go down. So I can speed up this audio by 150% and I can play it. And I don't know if you guys, I think you guys should be able to hear that. But anyways, uh, if you're not, it, obviously it's going to be much more sped up. Uh, now you can uh, lock the clip inspector if you like. Uh, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and put it back to 100% just so we have perfect audio there. All right, so enter. Um, so that's the clip inspector. Now if you right click it, you can obviously rename the clip if you want to adjust it. Cut it, copy it. You can uh, obviously split the clip at the playhead. So if you need to do some uh, cutting of the audio or editing. You can add a starting transition and an ending transition. So if you want to add like a fade in or something like that, or if, you, if you just want some sort of transition, uh, if it's like, you know, transitioning from a video or something like that. If you have video along with your, uh, uh, what do you call that, audio. So this will mainly be for video because you're not really, you can't really transition audio except for fading in and out. Um, all right, so with that, um, you can do a couple things within the audio properties menu, which is right here. Uh, you can adjust the main volumes, you know, the uh, sound of the volume, so you can make it louder or reduce the sound of it if it's too loud. Uh, you can do ducking, audio ducking, which will allow you to call, see, you can see here, cause the volume of other active audio clips in the timeline to reduce when the sound is detected. So what this means is, let's say you are, uh, let's say you are talking and then uh, in the, uh, clip it detects another sound like maybe a window sound or something if you enable those what it's going to do is going to reduce the audio sound detected in the clip if there's like a background noise or something like that or other audio kind of competing with the active audio clip so in this case the audio or the active audio is my voice so it's going to do some ducking of the background noise etc so the percentage of this will uh, obviously choose how much of the volume it, you want to be reduced in the background or anything like that. And you can see the meter here. This is meters help you out to see if your audio is peaking. You probably don't want to head up around this little red levels because then you know your audio is kind of peaking. It's kind of getting distorted. You want to keep right about in this zone right here in the middle. Uh, you can mute audio. You can mix input to mono if you do need to that. If you need to do that, obviously by default it'll probably be stereo. Um, now, what else can you do? You can add effects. You can add effects of rooms uh, in terms of how you want your audio to sound. So you can uh, click this, and you can see here you can have a band pass, a cathedral, so you kind of get more of an echoey sound, a large hall, a medium chamber, a plate, a presence, or a small room, or a small room with equalizer. Now, this can help. Let's say you are in one of these situations. You can add this effect to kind of match your audio sound, you know, if you want it to sound like that. If you want it to sound like you're in that situation, obviously this won't be a perfect 100% of the time, but if you do want to set that effect, so for example, I can set the large cathedral effect, or the cathedral, and I can just play it. And you get a little bit of a different sound. You're going to change that amount to higher. And you get a little bit of a different sound. I can change it to something like, let's see, large room. And, and you'll get a different sound as well uh, there. But by to add that, uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, add the audio action, I should say. So you're going to click on add audio action, and you will then get it more of a, you'll, you'll hear that sound change 
when you pass it. So right when it passes this that part in the timeline, that's when the audio action is going to start. So that's when it will cue that effect in terms of the audio. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this now. And we're going to talk a little bit about text. So uh, text properties. Now first off, to add text, you can add a text box. Now let's say you're just adding a title clip or anything like that. You can simply do that by do uh, adding the text box and double clicking here and then putting in something like digitaldojos.com. Now you can click on the text and drag it over and you can kind of adjust it. It gives you lines to kind of make it even stuff like that. You can make it wider or smaller by dragging on these little boxes right here. You can adjust your font, obviously. So you can just pick a font uh, from here. Uh, let's see, I'll just pick uh, Helvetica. And if it, obviously, again, you can adjust it. And you can adjust the size through the uh, numbers right here. Again, you know, stuff that you should know how to do by default. Uh, alignment and, you know, left, right, center. Uh, solid color. Now, this allows you to fill the text with uh, certain properties. Now, let's say you want to have a solid, you know, the text is white, but let's say you want it to be, in this case, I want it to be red. I can fill it with that solid color and make it red. I can make an outline of that. So you see it in there from the outline kind of changed now. Let's say I want the outline to be white instead of black. And then I get that kind of effect with the outline. My letters are kind of not really embossed, but just has that outline to it. And again, you can adjust how big you want the outline. So let's say you want it to be kind of like, uh, obviously you don't want to make it too big, because otherwise the solid color inside will kind of disappear. Um, but now you don't have to have it to be a solid color. You can adjust it to make it an image. So you can have an image within those letters. So let's say you want your like banner within letters of your website. Um, you can make it a gradient so you can be like multiple colors in that case. It'll look like that. And then again, you can change the outline if you don't want the outline and you can change whatever you want the fill to be. So you have three options. Now going down here, backdrop. Now you'll notice when, let's say you want to put a text on a video. So I'm going to go ahead or a picture or anything like that. So for this example, I'm going to drop my wallpaper that I currently have or one of my wallpapers to my uh, timeline here. And I'm going to add another text box and I'm going to drag the text box above the picture and or in this case, let's say it was a video. You can drag it. Up, you want to drag it above that uh, current video or picture. What it's going to do is going to overlay the text on top. And this is what it'll look like. I can click text. Now you want to make sure you click on the actual text so you can edit its properties. I'm going to double click on text and again I'm going to say, uh, for example, it's uh, put Twitter, twitter.com slash kidguru, <laughs> some free advertisement there. But All right, so this is the text I want to put. Now let's say I want to advertise that on my video, I want to put it at the end of my video, beginning, whatever. Uh, and again, make sure you click on the text if you want to move it. Um, now let's say I don't like that. See how it kind of has that black uh, backdrop to it. You know, we want to take that out. So what I want to do again, click on the text. You want to go down here to backdrop. You can change it from a again a solid color, or if you want it to be an image fill, you can have it do that. You can make an image in the backdrop again if you want to make it whatever. Uh, you can adjust the backdrop so right now it's kind of rounded to 20 pixels. You can change the color. You can make it you know white, red, whatever, um, and you can make it kind of transparent. Now in this case you can also adjust the margin. So if you want it to be big margin, small margin, whatever, you might want to have like a text box uh, kind of separate in the video. You can do that. Now, if you turn the backdrop off, you're obviously just going to get straight text, and uh, some people might prefer that depending on you know what the situation is for your video. You can add multiple text boxes again, and you can have them uh, fade in and out, uh, adjusting them uh, by right-clicking them and showing them in the clip inspector, etc. You can uh, add, again, multiple text boxes, and if you just want to have it as a title clip, you just want to have it independent, you just add a text box outside of that. Um, and again, you can add your own you know fills, gradients, image backdrops, whatever. So with that, guys, that shows you guys a little bit about using audio callouts and text properties, or not audio callouts, I should say audio actions and text properties. Very, very basic things that make the video go a long way. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about more video rendering stuff and some other tips when making your uh, screen flow videos. So with that, guys, I will catch you guys in the next tutorial.